Robinson Crusoe. Or the life and strange, surprising adventures of Robinson Crusoe of York, who spent eight and twenty years on an uninhabited island. This is his history. A whole collection of wonders. As a young man, Robinson wanted to seek his adventure and become a seafarer. His father was against it. Stay at home. Be secure. Study law. If you stay at home, you might be happy. If you go abroad, you will be the miserablest wretch that ever lived. But Robinson decides to seek adventure and fortune at sea. On his first journey, the ship sinks after a tremendous storm, but Robinson is saved. On his second journey as a merchant, he is successful. But on his third journey, he is taken by pirates and made a slave. He escapes and helped by the captain of a Portuguese ship journeys to Brazil where he becomes a successful planter. Thanking God for his survival, but feeling guilty because he did not obey his father's wishes. Despite his success, adventure calls again. And Robinson sets out to find some slaves for his plantation. The ship is wrecked. A tremendous tornado took us and blew for 12 days. And then a second storm and the ship struck upon sand. An enormous wave, mountain-like, took us and buried me in its body. It took me towards the shore and I swam, holding my breath with all my might. He lands safely. Thanks be to God, but alone. He takes some food, guns, gunpowder, and other useful things from the ship before it breaks up and sinks. He begins to keep a record of time by erecting a cross and cutting notches in it. One for every day that passes, from the 1st of September, 1659. And then, keeps a daily journal. He builds a fence, a tent, creates a cave, and even later, a summer retreat where grapes grow. Then he falls ill and has a religious experience. He dreams that a fearful man descends from a great cloud and says, since all this has not brought thee to repentance, thou shalt die. He reflects on his awful situation, sees God as his saviour, reads the Bible and prays. He tames goats, milks them and makes cheese. He builds a small boat and journeys round the island even captures a parrot and teaches it to speak. Where's Crusoe? He grows grain, which he saved from the ship, and then makes bread. Learns to make pots, baskets, even an umbrella. He begins to feel at peace with himself and his surroundings. All this takes great perseverance, thought and hard work. He sees himself as king of the island. And then he sees a footprint. He is thunderstruck. The devil? Cannibals? He retires to his small fortress and never goes anywhere without a gun, two pistols and a great cutlass. Then he hears gunfire. 
and sees another ship wrecked off the island. He discovers a skull, bones, hands, feet, the apparent remains of people eaten by cannibals. The cannibals return and he manages to release one of their victims who he calls Friday. Friday becomes his servant. He teaches him a little English, introduces him to Christianity, teaches him everything that is useful, handy and helpful. The cannibals return again, this time with two more victims, Friday's father and a Spaniard. They manage to drive the cannibals away and Robinson welcomes these two new members of his community. Then, eight days later, an English ship arrives off the island and a group of men come ashore. They have prisoners. Robinson releases the prisoners and discovers that one of them is the captain of the ship. The crew are mutineers. He manages to confuse the mutineers and tells them that this is an imperial island and the governor will not allow them to leave unless they return to face justice. They board the ship. And after eight and 20 years, two months and 19 days, Robinson returns to England, where he finds that his family are dead, but his savings are safe. And his friend in Lisbon tells him that his Brazilian plantation has been a success. He sells it and makes a considerable fortune. Finally, he returns to his island as a trader and finds it being well governed by the Spaniards. It has become a prosperous colony.